Okay, um, this is my review of episode three. If you haven't watched episode three, don't fucking watch this. You can watch episode three in like a hundred thousand places. You can get on the PlayStation Store in the video section. You can also go to thetester.com. You can also go to YouTube, which is what you are on right now. Go to the search bar, type in the Tester 3, episode 3, and you'll be able to find it. Anyway, this is like my fucking fifth time trying to record this. Um, because Photo Booth, is, for some reason, will keep recording, um, and it won't tell me that it has stopped recording my video. So, uh, each time I've done it, it's been like 30 minutes long, and so it's like really, really pissing me off that, um... Like, I'm to the point where I have a headache from hearing myself talk. So, um, there was going to be a lot of detail in this, um, review, but because of my fucking laptop, my fucking MacBook, which I want to go fucking office space on, um, is being gay, I, uh, I, um, am going to do you an abridged version. Um, Burn and Christy are talking in the beginning of this episode. Um, I agree exactly with what they say. Um, you know, Burn says that Skyden is passionate for the wrong things. I agree. She's passionate about the performing arts um, and being the center of attention, having an audience. Um, and she's not going to be happy, you know, working in a studio. Uh, Christy says that Skyden has segregated herself, and I agree. Skyden did segregate herself, and that was her decision. Um, you can see that she's, like, in her room, you know, writing on her journal or whatever. Um, and, you know, if, if people were telling me, you know, like, I'm not a gamer, I'd be like, oh, yeah, well, like, um, you know, and then I would, like, talk about them, or, like, you know, every once in a while, like, play games, or, you know, just, like, try to, try to prove them wrong, because if she's honestly not, like, the way that, that we, th we think she is, then, you know, she would do something about it, but she's, she doesn't, she doesn't try to do anything. Um, so our challenge is Uncharted, and I think that it's going to be something like Man vs. Wild. Like, we're going to be out in the desert, and we have to find our way back to the loft. Something crazy like that. Um, but I think it's cool that Burn tried to squash her beef with, um, with Seuss Gaiden before the challenge, because that's what you need to do when you want to work as a team. Um, you guys need to be able to work together and put all your differences aside. So I thought that was really cool, Burn. Um, but you arrive to the challenge, and it's this paintball, um, this paintball place, and there's, like, these giant obstacles everywhere, and I'm immediately thinking I'm 5'4", I'm fucking 115 pounds, um, I don't fucking exercise, do any physical activity on top of that, I've been a smoker for nine years, um, I don't really do well physically, so I'm kind of nervous about this challenge. Um, TN team gets to go first, Burn doesn't carry any melons, and you always think of a strategy before you go into the challenge, and, and, um, in theory, the cha the the, um, you know, the strategy that they use, um, it sounds good, you know, have somebody that gets there real fast and, um, have them shoot, but, um, being executed, it didn't work out very well, and on top of that, it did look pretty bad to the panel that, that Burn didn't have any melons, um, Achilles once again took on the leadership role, which I thought was a good idea because he does have military background, um, and he was a good leader. Um, you know, he was, he was encouraging, uh, Ninja, and when Ninja, you know, just said, you know, dude, I can't do it, you know, Achilles took his melons, and it was like, you know, just go, dude, go. Um, so I thought that was really, that, that showed, uh, Achilles' leadership skill there. Um, it, um, when Sue Skyden was shooting, um, the targets, she was the second person to go. And, um, honestly, like... Emeritus says, right after she shoots it down, like, two down for tan team, um, and this just guy keeps shooting, and then she says, she's like, oh, I didn't know that I, I, I wasn't sure if I shot my down or not, well, like, you got one person that went in front of you, like, shot their shit down, then you've got you, if you're not sure you shot your shit down, Meredith would have said one, still one target down for, t for tan team, but if you would have shot yours down, one plus one is two. It's two, and that's what Meredith said. There's two. And that shows that Suskaiden doesn't listen. In episode two, she didn't listen. You know, Ego Raptor and everybody was trying to tell them, like, hey, try this, try that. She didn't listen. Same with this one. Meredith says two or three other times, only one team member can shoot down one target. Only one target can be shot down by one team uh, teammate. And then she gets to the point where she has to say, um, and I quote, Suskaiden, back off. And you know that... When Meredith, the host, has to fucking tell you, like, you already fucking got it. Stop trying to fucking do it for Burn. Like, you're not a good listener. Um, 
But eventually, you know, like, they get done with their shit, and then it's our turn. Um, this shit is huge. Like, it takes you forever to climb up over this shit. Like, you know, we have to get down on our hands and knees. Like, my fucking legs and arms were bruised up for the next week after that. Um, because we're pushing ourselves so hard. We don't care about if it hurts. We don't care about if it's dirty. We just fucking do it. Um, that, sling sh that slingshot was so hard to use. Um, there was so much torque on it. Like, I couldn't even use my arm strength to pull it back. I had to, um, use all the leg strength I had and my body weight to pull that shit back. And on top of that, like, trying to launch melons out of it with accuracy was really difficult. It felt like it took, like, five minutes for me to shoot mine down. Um, and, uh, j Tight was really encouraging, you know, his, his, um, his job that he took on was to, you know, make sure there was always a supply of melons, um, in front of the shooter, you know, kind of guide them in how to, how to shoot the slingshot, and, uh, just be an encouraging teammate. And, um, I think one of the most important things when you're working as, in a team is to have support and encouragement, and j Tight definitely did that. Um, we're having a lot of fun during the, during the challenge as well. Um, you hear me laughing and, you know, Christy, when she misses her target, she's like, oh, you know, um, and I think that's also another, um, important thing about, especially when you're working under stress and under pressure is to try to just keep your cool. And we do that just by having fun. Um, and, uh, when we won, I didn't even know that we won, like, not that we won, but like when we finished our challenge, I didn't even know because I was still on the obstacle course and, um, going through the bus and, um, when I step foot out of the bus, everyone's, like, cheering and stuff, and I'm like, what happened? Like, did we, did we do it? And then Chris was like, yeah, like, we did it. And, like, I was so pissed, because that was my third trip through the obstacle course with melons, and, like, I was pissed, because I was like, I just went all this way to get melons, we don't even fucking need them. So, I, like, took a melon out of my bag, and I spiked it on the ground. And, uh, but then I was like, wait a minute, like, this is a good thing, like, we finished our challenge. So then I, like, started to celebrate, because I was all excited excited for finishing it um so um when we got back um to the loft after we realized that we had won um Achilles decides to bring his whole team over to kind of talk about the challenge again that shows Achilles is um what do you call that his initiative as a leader um I thought it was cool that they all kind of discussed uh the challenge a little bit and like what they were going to do during elimination um it was a uh, so funny to see Jay Tight's reaction when Nolan North came in and that scene where like they go to hug each other was just so adorably cute. Um and I was laughing the whole time. Um Nolan North's a really cool guy. He's also a really attractive looking older man. Um but uh it was really cool to just talk to him, kinda like, you know, um be able to connect with somebody from inside of the gaming industry and uh, you know, he was telling us to pursue our dreams and um, you know, letting us ask questions to him. Um, the, the, being able to play Uncharted 3, like, a completely unlocked version was awesome. Being able to play an unlocked Vita was awesome. You know, we got to, we weren't supposed to, but me and Christy were playing around on it. Like, you can get applications on it. You know, it's got two cameras on it. You use six-axis control. Um, it's got a light sensor on it. Um, it'll fucking make you a cup of coffee. It grants you three wishes. It's the fucking shit. Um... So, uh, when we were talking to Byrne, you know, we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, how Sue Skyden has kind of been coasting along, um, just because she makes good TV, and Byrne was like, hey, like, you should say something about it, and, um, you know, with Asuka, I kind of wish I would have spoke up more, because, um, you know, she is definitely a girl who is involved with PlayStation, um, you know, is involved in her games, knows what she's talking about, knows what she's doing, and it sucks that she went home. Um, just because she wasn't able to really, um, voice her opinion well. And, uh, so I decided this episode to, to speak out. Um, so, you know, during elimination, um, you know, they asked Byrne, you know, what did you think about today's performances? And she immediately calls, uh, Sue Skyden out. And, um, you know, in a way I was, I was, I kind of reacted with Achilles, like, you know, you called her out, like, immediately. That's, like, the first thing you said. Like, I would have you know, said, like, something that I did well, and then, you know, kind of be like, but there were others who, you know, like, lacked a little bit, um, but at the same time, you know, she's trying to show reasons why she gets to, why she should stay instead of Sue Skyden, um, you know, Sue Skyden told Byrne, like, you know, you didn't do your job today, and you didn't do your job last challenge, but Sue Skyden did the same thing, you know, Byrne wasn't able to do her job at last challenge because Sue Skyden couldn't build the truck. 
because of that, everybody else on her team didn't get the opportunity to shine. That responsibility fell on her shoulders. Same thing with today. So Skyden wasn't listening again, and that was um, a huge, huge, um, you know, hurting aspect in why they lost. Because, you know, Suskaiden kept shooting fucking melons for God knows how long when she wasn't supposed to be. Um, so, I mean, obviously, it just show, like, Suskaiden just doesn't listen. Um, and, you know, like, um, after I spoke up and Christy spoke up, you know, Brent said, well, you know, like, I agree with David Jaffe, you know, passion is a good thing, but what me and Christy are trying to show is that, like, she does have passion, she has a lot of passion, but it's not for the gaming industry, it's for the performing arts, for having an audience, and, um, she's not going to be happy in a studio, and I definitely don't want them to pick somebody who is not going to be happy in a job, who's not going to be able to give their 110%, because that's not something that they have a passion for, um, and I also thought that it, first of all, Burn going home over Sue Skyden, like, are you fucking kidding me? Secondly, I think Ego went home for also a bullshit reason. Um, saying that he didn't say, stay to help his team figure out how to shoot a slingshot. We're all over 21 years old. Um, instructions are simple. Put a melon in there, pull it back, let it go. Um, we might not be perfect at it in the very beginning. I'm a good example of that. It took me forever to shoot mine, but I'm a fucking adult. I figured it out. Ego Raptor can't sit there saying, hey, put a melon in there, pull it back, let it go. That would just be a waste of time. Like, go get some more melons. If you suck, then you suck, but at least there's like 50 fucking other melons over here for you to try. It's just a trial and error type thing. You can't just tell somebody how to do it. Um, and to say that Ego lost three in a row. Yes, episode one, he kind of did fuck up. Episode two, he didn't really lose that challenge. Two Skyden and Asuka lost that challenge because their, the rest of their team wasn't able to do anything because they couldn't build their ice cream cart. So that responsibility shouldn't have lied on Eagle Raptor's shoulders at all. I thought the w the way that he got eliminated, why he got eliminated, was a total bullshit. Also, the double elimination, total surprise. We didn't even know. We thought it was just going to be one person. Um, but honestly, um, to have Ego and 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 Burn go home was a oh, total bullshit. Um, and then also, you know, Brent says. Uh, Brent says, oh, this isn't a popularity contest. Well, I'm sorry. Um, we don't like Sue Skyden for legitimate reasons. She doesn't want to be here for the right reasons. We've seen a lot of people go home because of her. That's why we don't like her. It's not because, you know, she's fucking loud or, oh, we're so jelly of her weave. Like, no, we don't like her because she doesn't want to be here for the right reason. She's fucking big physique. She's big physique of this season. Um, I thought when Burn left, she had beautiful parting words. Um, you know, she said, I'm going to be who I am. Um, and, you know, nobody's going to change that. And she said, I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing, you know, like she's a manager at GameStop. Burn, we fucking love you. Um, you know, we fought for you, and it sucks that the panel couldn't see what we saw in the house. Um, but I'm proud of you for what you did on the show. And um, I hope life is well. Um, and we miss you. Uh, next episode is going to be Street Fighter Cross Tekken episode. I fucking hate fighting games so fucking much. Hate them, hate them, hate them. Um... And I say that in the episode, by the way. I'm like, I fucking hate video. Oh, I fucking hate fighting games. Um, but I'm really excited to see what our performances looked like because um, we didn't really get to see them. Uh, and um, I'm also going to be kind of sad to watch it, too. But um, anyway, I uh, hope you guys are excited for um, the next episode. And um, this is some outro music I made on some, like, flash shit. I'm trying it out, but uh, this is what you're gonna hear whenever um, like my vlogs or my episodes are going to end. Um, and this is why I'm gonna tell you to do shit like you even give a shit about what I tell you to do. Like follow me on Twitter, Quadramonster. Uh, you can also email me at quadramonster at gmail.com. Don't forget to, to subscribe to my channel um, because I do talk about other shit besides video games. Because I'm sorry, like um, I have a fucking life. I do other things besides fucking play video games. Um, so yeah, uh, oh, and I have a special surprise later this week. Um, we will be having the lovely Ego Raptor um, for an interview for episode three. So uh, tune in for that, and uh, I'll be seeing you cool cats next time.